Michigan Replay with Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you by the General Motors. In the Michigan Replay, the Michigan football team retains the Little Brown Jug for another year with a 48-7 victory over Minnesota. How did it get to be 48 to 7? Uh, you told us last week <laughs> that these guys were tough. Right. Well, how did it get to be that way? Well, in, uh, in both cases, last week against Purdue and this week against Minnesota, um, we made big plays in the kicking game, and uh, we uh, capitalized on some turnovers, and uh, we hit some big plays. And that combination uh, led to 48 points. You said after the game that really you can't blow this team out if if it's a straight right. game. You, right. They had to help, That's and they right. helped with turnovers. They helped with turnovers and partially blocked punt and uh, punt return for a touchdown, fumble. Uh, those things are eventually going to kill you. At the same time, we didn't turn the ball over. You put the challenge on the defense last week about stopping this option quarterback. Well, they did it. Yes, they did. Are they good enough for you? Well, they were certainly good enough in this game. <laughs> There's no question about it. But when it started, uh, they were featuring the fullback on the option and giving the ball to him, and he found some yardage in there. Here's the option play, run to perfection. Used motion to block our strong safety here, and uh, he roared out for a first down. It, so they're at midfield yeah. real fast. At this point, it did look a little tough. Right. Third and five, and old reliable uh, Mike <laughs> Hammerstein uh, somehow had the starting counter. He had something because he was in the backfield before they could even get turned around. So that uh, stopped that play. This is a great run by Jamie Moore. This is a screen pass, and uh, Jamie uh, breaks it back across the grain here, gets into the open, got a couple of blocks, and took it down into their territory, and that was a big play, and certainly uh, the key play in setting up our first touchdown drive. And then you just power the ball in. Right. This is Jamie Morris in the power sweep, breaks through for 11 yards and another first down, and uh, we're in four down territory and running the football. Uh, Gerald White, who I thought uh, had an excellent game for us, uh, picks up good yardage, and uh, we're down in there ready to score on, on our your, first drive. Yeah, this is your first possession. You couldn't have asked, really, for a better drive, could you? No. The big play was the screen, put us into their territory, and then from then on, we banged it home. And again, the defense came up with big plays, and it was one of those things where they always continued to, and right. here they get a fumble. They get a fumble here, and and uh, Andy Moeller gets the football for us, and we're deep in their territory and ready to go again, but didn't go, Jim. We, uh, we failed to move the football effectively. Mike Gillette kicks a field goal, and uh, with our, only our second possession, uh, we're ahead 10 to nothing. That field goal ties a season record set by Bob Bergeron, and again, they come back, and the defense, Ivan Hicks in this Ivan case. Hicks intercepts. Uh, they, this is the option pass, uh, attempted to hit the guy, uh, you know, faking along the line of scrimmage, and then raise up and hit it. Ivan was in position and picked it off. Were you aware that some of those things were going to happen in this game? Did you have them defense like that? Well, I, they worked hard on those option passes, because when you throw the ball from the line of scrimmage, it's difficult for your backs. They don't know whether to play option or pass. Here Jim rolls out and hits Eric Caddis for a first down. There's a big third down and eight situation. Uh, Jim goes back and hits uh, Paul Jokic on the post cut, uh, coming from the backside to make it 17. Down. And I think a great job by Harbaugh recognizing single coverage on right. Jokic. Right. And uh, Paul got by him. David Arnold, our freshman uh, safety man, uh, poured through here and blocked a punt uh, after we had... Uh, once again, stopped Minnesota, gave us field position inside the 30. Uh, Jim comes right back and on a third down situation, hits Gerald White for the first down, uh, just shy of the 20. When you talk about getting help to score all those points, the reason is you get black punts and you only have to go 30 yards. That's right, that helps. Here's uh, third and four, Jim hits the out cut to Jokic for a first down. And we're down inside the 10, third down and goal to go. Uh, back to pass, and Jamie comes out the backside over here and runs in for a touchdown. We're ahead 24 to nothing. At this point, the crowd was a little problem earlier, but maybe the crowd was <laughs> out of it by now. Well, once you get 24 ahead, they, uh, they really don't bother you nearly as much. Uh, our next possession, Jim comes out on first down and uh, throws to Eric Caddis, who gets good yardage, um, and we're in their territory again. Jim goes back to pass once again, and... This time, uh, catches Paul Jokic on a great catch here. Beautiful play. 
The official was right on it and called it a touchdown, which was uh, accurate. But uh, Minnesota people didn't like that. They didn't, well, they didn't think yeah, that he held the ball. The rule is the ground can't cause right. a fumble. He had, he, had, he had the ball put away. He was uh, running on the ground, and so it was a good call. They come back with Allen Holt at quarterback. Holt at quarterback now, and they, this is their big drive just before the half, taking the ball down in, and uh, Holt does a good job, hits a couple of passes here. They're down in there ready to score. They're racing the clock. And this is a uh, fourth down play, I believe, right. And he got in, but however, they were illegally in motion. So they take it back five yards, and, and you see me pointing it out there. <laughs> <You> <laughs> that the man was illegally in motion. The referee made a good move on So that. Holt goes back to pass again. The receivers are covered. He takes off running and, of course, doesn't make it. So that was a big lift. We went in at halftime 31 to nothing. At that point, 31 to nothing, you had to feel great. And the other thing I think that really made it was the fact that you did stop them right. just before the half. Right. Tremendous emotional lift for your team, right. tremendous down for theirs. Right. That was, an, that was uh, an emotional stop there. And, of course, we needed help from a penalty, but I want you to know there were two big penalties that took them down there with a chance to score. <laughs> All right. We've got the second half highlights coming up, and the second half includes a record performance by Jim Harbaugh, the quarterback of Michigan. So stay with us. All the credit has to go to the offensive line. I've never had so much time to throw in my whole life. Twice we caught him in man-to-man -man coverage, and Paul Jokic uh, did a really good job, you know, getting open, beating the man coverage, and making a spectacular catch in the end zone on that one. Uh, records really don't mean a whole lot. The uh, only thing on our mind is the Big Ten Championship. but it was the right return and I went up in the middle and I thought everything was to the right so I went to the left and I was gone. Uh, I've been waiting for a touchdown for four years and it finally came and when I saw it I just, just took off. Nice to see a youngster like Gilvani Johnson get that touchdown. He's been right. a long time and, sure. and really deserves one of those, doesn't he? Yes, he did, and he's got good speed, as you saw. He, once he broke into the clear, we knew at midfield he was going to make it. With the big lead, uh, we talked about it last week in the, against Purdue. Were you as we leery of Minnesota's offense maybe coming back as you were uh, against Minnesota, or uh, uh, Purdue, rather? Well, they did that against, uh, they came back well against Michigan State after they were down by 31, and so you're always uh, concerned about that. I think the important thing when you have a big lead at halftime is what do you do when you come out of the locker room at the beginning of the game? Well, you did That's it. That's the key. You did it. And I tell you, Jim Harbaugh is getting to be one of the best quarterbacks I've seen thrown on the run. Yes, he's done that pretty well, I'm <laughs> sure. Here we are in the uh, third quarter now, and uh, Jim didn't find anybody open, so he scrambled out here and hit Eric Caddis. And Eric made a great catch, and you'll notice he fell on the ball. We had to take him out for a play or two. But we failed to get the ball in the end zone here and had to go to the field goal. And Mike Gillette kicked it to make it 34 to nothing. And that breaks the single season record by Bob Bergeron. So Mike Gillette now, the most prolific Michigan kicker. But the defense was the story of this game right. again. This is third and seven. You can see uh, linebacker tips the ball. And uh, we're around the ball pretty well, doing a good job in there against their uh, passing attack now, which, of course, they're going to have to do to get caught up here. This is Jamie Morris breaking up the middle for good yardage in our uh, next possession. Uh, Jim goes back to pass again and scrambles out here. Now they have a, a three-man rush here, so we can. Uh, he's running around here, and you know I don't know. Uh, you don't necessarily <laughs> like to see that, do you? Well, I like to see it when he hits Yoki's hair for a big <laughs> first down, but you know. And then we go back to running the football a little bit, and Gerald White breaks up the middle for good yardage. I thought Gerald played a good game, ran hard, and uh, did an excellent job. This is Bob Perriman in at fullback now. He bangs in there for good yardage, and we're down in there again. And, and on the off-tackle play, you can see uh, Gerald goes in standing up for the touchdown. And if there was one drive that maybe put it out of reach, it. that was it, because it to was me, 90 yards. That's right. To me, that, that was a 90-yard drive for the touchdown, and that took him out of the game. And the defense continues to play. And, right. and I think that's one of the key things of this team. Even when you got the big lead, well, they're still in there they're going still at them. They're still in there going, that's right. And, of course, we gave a lot of defensive guys a chance to play in this game in the second half, which was good. Here's Gilvani Johnson uh, on catching that ball inside the 20. And you can see here, by midfield, we knew he was going right there at the 50. We knew he was going. All they had was the kicker left. And 
and uh, that wasn't good enough to get him stopped. And had the kicker caught Gilvani, you'd have had a few words for him, wouldn't no. you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how fast that kicker could run. <laughs> well, uh, Minnesota came back later and did get a touchdown yes, late in the game to make it 48-7. But you look at the game, your offense was making big plays, your defense stopped the option, which you challenged them with last week. Right. You're peaked, right? I hope not. <laughs> you know, the biggest game of the year is coming up next week, Jim, and I hope we haven't peaked. But we played pretty well the last two weeks, and... And uh, our ball club is excited about the Ohio State game. We're really looking forward to it. Well, I think one of the keys, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but Mike Hussar came back, right. seemed to solidify the offensive line a little bit, which has been hurt by injuries. You had to feel good right, about that. Right. Mike came back, played about two and a half quarters in their guard, at the strong guard position. I don't know how well he did, but uh, I think uh, once we study the film, I think you'll find that he blocked pretty well in there. He's been off for six weeks. And it'll take a little time for him to get back. So this game was great in that regard because it got him back in there with a chance to play and get back in the groove. Michigan keeps the little brown jug. Stay with us because coming up now, we'll take a look at part two of our series on the NCAA death penalty. The pros.